Hi, and a very warm welcome to Hamilton Central Model Railway. Last weekend, I enjoyed the SRPS Rail Tour with my dad up to Aviemore. And the tour was hauled by two 37s, 37403 in large logo, and also West Coast Railways 37685 in their beautiful maroon livery. And what I wanted to do was to try and... Um, create a model that reminded me of that day and this is a documentation of that project. We start with the Bachman 32395 in West Coast Railways Maroon. Now the Bachman 37s I think are brilliant and this will be my fourth one. And there's still a few of these available so I managed to get hold of one and what we'll need to do is renumber it and I'm using the Railtech Transfers uh, West Coast Railways set and we'll need to name it Lock Archaig which we got from Fox Transfers. Renumbering seems like a job that should be really straightforward but to do it with the reels a painted on look is actually really difficult and there's a lot of work involved in it. We start by getting the old number off um, and this differs between models. Some numbers are easy to get off, some numbers are really difficult to get off. Bachmann tend to be quite tricky to get off. So the technique that I'm using is a cotton bud soaked in isopropanol and then just gently rubbing away. And what you can see on the bud is that we've got the, the yellow paint from the number but we're not lifting any of the maroon and that's what we want and we're just going to take our time and gently rub away at it, concentrating just in the area with the numbers on it. A very light pressure. What we don't want to do is to start lifting the maroon coloured paint. And once the solvent soaks in, um, and it's, it's a really good solvent, isopropanol, because it's not too strong that it's going to lift off the maroon. It just really works in the area that we're applying pressure to. And you can see now that we've pretty well got the number off. We've not lifted any of the maroon off. Um, and that's exactly where we want to be. And we'll give it a quick wipe with a, a full swab and then we're on to some 15,000 grit sandpaper because the next thing that's important is that we need to polish the surface to a high gloss finish so that we can then get the new numbers on without silvering and that's the secret to getting uh, no silvering is to make sure it goes on to a gloss surface. So we've got the Realtek transfers, a really thin carrier film on them, so they're def delicate to work with. Using a, a cocktail stick, nice and soft, and that minimises us uh, damaging or tearing the transfer. Gently move it around, get it into position, take our time with that. And then we're going to press, um, first run is quite light so that we don't move the transfer. Then we give it a couple of runs over with a cotton bud to smooth out the air, then leave it to dry. What we've also done is remove some of the carrier film between the 7 and the 6. Um, not bad, um, and now we've masked it up and we're ready to go and give it an overspray. And this is what really makes the difference with getting a quality finish in the model. So I'm using my trusty old airbrush, an old Revel airbrush, single stage airbrush, and I'm using... Um, Humbrol 135 Satin Varnish, which has been diluted, and it's a real knack to getting the right mix. Three coats, um, and you can see now that there is no evidence of silvering or anything like that. A really good finish, and I'm really happy with it. Nice job is adding the nameplate, and I've glued this on using Gorilla PVA, which is nice and strong, but it's still forgiving enough and doesn't mark paint. Start the weathering with a pin wash, which is a technique that a lot of the military aircraft guys use. And that's using a very, very thin mixture of paint and allowing that to run into a lot of the crevices and things around doorways and stuff like that. So any recessed details. So we'll do the steps, we'll do the door uh, and we'll do the door at the front as well. And you can see... Um, it's it just really starts to bring things to life. It's very, very subtle the way it works, but a really easy technique to use. And I've used it round about the catches and the recesses on the nose, which just is a little bit of a uh, sparkle to it. We're now on to the main airbrush weathering, and I'm just going to use a mixture of three colours for this. Matte 32, which is grey, matte 33 black and matte 62 which is matte leather 
And I'm going to use various blends of these. And by keeping the same three colours, it, it means that we can make transition between the various hues um, and it keeps the, the logo looking much more natural that way rather than using separate colours for top and bottom. So we'll generally, uh, everything will have matte leather in it, which is kind of like the weathering equivalent of um, yellow ochre in art. That It just gives that sort of natural brown kind of colour to everything that ties it all together. We start with a blend of matte leather and a little bit of black, which gives us a, a quite a light brown colour, which we're going to start as the basic tone on the bogies to give it that very dry sort of track brown rusty sort of metal that they are made of. What I then do is spray that over the front which looks really over the top because most locos keep the warning panel clean but what we're going to do later on is wipe all this back. I then start to add more black to this mix to change the tone of it and we'll gradually add little bits and bobs to the areas we already over sprayed to give it a, a very non-uniform look which is much much more realistic. One of the areas that are usually missed by the washing plants and locals are the grills and dirt collects within them. And that's one of the areas that we can concentrate on with the models to, again, add that little bit of life to them. So with the darker um, spray colour, um, I'm going to spray into all the grills along the locomotive. And this is what we get. Um, and it really does add a... a sparkle to the locomotive it's just one of these other steps that just brings things to life we'll now move on to the roof and it's the only area that i'll use pure black on it's just a little bit of soot round about the exhaust ports and then i'm going to mix my matte 32 dark gray with some matte leather to give a sort of gray color that goes across the rest of the roof but again quite a thin coat on here We'll add a little bit of fuel staining just under the filling ports, which is just satin varnish painted on. And then we're going to wipe back the buffer beam area on the front. So again, a cotton bud with isopropanol. Um, and we're just going to wipe away, um, but not be too careful about getting into the, the crevices and things like that, because that's what's really going to give the, the area some life, is leaving some of that dirt stuck in the, the light clusters and in amongst the lamp brackets and things like that. And there we are. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. I think the locals turned out really well. It's a beautiful livery to start with. Backman 37s are great locomotives, so Let's enjoy it running around the layout a few times and thanks very much again for watching.